Hi there! This is going to be our last set of lectures on memory. And what we're going to do in this lecture is apply what we know about memory to the law. And we're going to focus on eyewitness testimony. Now to motivate all of this, I need to explain to you, first of all, that a lot of people go to jail for crimes that they never committed. And on the slide that you're seeing now, I'm showing you uh, four individuals who served many years in prison because they were convicted on the basis of eyewitness testimony that later turned out to be wrong or made up or worse. Um, so what we're going to be talking about in lecture series 16 is really important stuff. And if you ever have to deal with our legal system or serve as a juror, um, you need to know what we're going to talk about now. You might find some of this content upsetting when you think about the implications of the fragility of memory for our legal system. It is upset. First thing I want to do is explain the idea that we have memory failures all the time. All of us do. So I'm not trying to pick on people who are eyewitnesses. I'm, I'm really not trying to do that. So let me introduce the concept of false memories. False memory is our memory of an event that did not actually take place. Uh, I've got three examples of it here, so you can get a sense of what I mean. The first one is a memory error made by a reporter by the name of Brian Williams, who worked for NBC. He was the anchor of the nightly news, and he told people that he remembered being in a helicopter that was hit by a grenade. Turns out, he had not been in a helicopter that had been hit by a grenade. He had, however, been in a helicopter right behind a helicopter that was hit by a grenade. I can't imagine how terrifying that must have been to see a helicopter in front of you explode. And I can only assume that your first reaction was that you were going to die too. So it's not entirely um, unreasonable for someone to make that kind of an error. Brian Williams' error is similar to an error that Hillary Clinton made back when she was First Lady. She landed in um, a country called Bosnia. It used to be part of a country called Yugoslavia. At a time when Yugoslavia was undergoing a uh, major civil war. And she landed in a plane and remembers the plane being shot at or being under sniper fire when it landed. Now, it turns out when that plane landed, it was not shot at. But I want you to see this picture of this meet and greet event uh, that she completed right after she landed. And I want you to see that she's wearing a big, heavy, green jacket. It's quite big, right? It looks like she's put on 50 pounds. That's not what happened. She's wearing a bulletproof vest. All, everybody around her has on, look at all the soldiers. They're wearing bulletproof material, right? The helmets. Uh, Bosnia was under sniper attack for years. The people who lived there went through hell. Um, so it is not that Hillary Clinton made up the entire idea that there was shooting in Bosnia. Oh no, she was there when people were being shot at in Bosnia. They just didn't happen to shoot at her plane when it landed. This is a classic kind of memory error. Uh, another one is from Donald Trump when he ran for the presidency the first time in 2016. And uh, while he was on the campaign trail in 2016, he repeatedly promised to save a thousand jobs that a gas factory had been planning on shipping um, outside of the U.S., moving the jobs abroad. Uh, later, they did move the jobs abroad. The jobs were not saved. And Trump said he had absolutely no memory of having ever made that promise. Well. That's a memory error, right? He, he recognized that it was a memory error after he saw um, a, a TV video of him making that promise. Um, so what I want you to understand is people make mistakes, and the mistakes absolutely can be unintentional. 
Sure, people lie. I'm not disagreeing with that. But people can make honest mistakes, too. Um, before we go too much farther, I want to play a little video that's going to involve a demonstration that you really, 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 really want to do. If you only do one, participate in one demonstration in this class, make it be this one. Okay, so the demonstration is you're going to see a man, read a list of 15 words, and when he's done, you just write down all of the words that you remember. And then he'll go over and read the list again so you can check your words, okay? So you totally want to do this. So get out a piece of paper and a pencil, or have your laptop there, it doesn't matter, and write down how many words of the 15 word list you remember. I'm gonna read off a list of 15 words, and you're going to listen as closely as possible, and then when I'm done, I'm going to ask you to try to recall as many of those words as possible. And then I'm going to read back the list to you and you're going to see which ones you got right. If you're ready and you have a pen, I'm going to start right now. Bed, rest, awake, tired, dream, wake, snooze, blanket, doze, Slumber, snore, nap, peace, yawn, drowsy. So I'm going to reread the list of words and I want you just to check them off when you have a match. Awake, dream, Doze. Sleep. Did you have sleep? Because if you had sleep, it wasn't on the list. And that's an example of how we create false memories by association. half of you just experienced a false memory. You remembered hearing the word sleep when the word sleep was not presented. That is a false memory. So it's not just eyewitnesses or politicians or newscasters. We are all subject to false memories. Um, and how are false memories created? How is this particular false memory created? Well, you can think of um, the word sleep as a lure word, like a fishing lure. And um, what do I mean by that? Uh, if you can see this network of words, the words that were on the list all related to sleep. Bed, pillow, nap, slumber, sleep. All of those concepts in your brain were activated. That activation probably spread to the word sleep because they're all related to sleep. And that's the thing about false memories, is they're false in one sense, they didn't happen, but they're always implied in another one. They're not crazy memories. They are related to what's going on. Okay. Uh, I want to show you a demonstration of what it's like to be an eyewitness. So participate in this and you'll find it quite interesting, I'm sure. I promise. <coughs>
This is a good. It's hard to pick the person, the thief, right? It's hard to identify the person that you saw. Being an eyewitness is very difficult. So which person did you pick from the lineup? It turns out the person that you saw, the actual person who you saw up on the roof, wasn't in the lineup. If you picked anybody, you picked wrong. Okay, come right back and we're going to talk about the impact of your beliefs on your memories.